and welcome. It's Joy. It's Joy Ruffin coming to you from the Sunshine State. And tonight, our show is all about leading ladies, leaving legacies, living legacies. And tonight, we have a guest for you that you're going to enjoy. So sit back, get a pad and a pencil, and take some notes. Even though I'm going to put across the screen all the data that you'll need, you're going to get nuggets that you're going to want to keep. Our guest tonight is Alexi Thompson. She is the creator of the Tribal Gratitude Journal, which we're going to be talking a lot about tonight. She's also a keynote speaker and an executive coach and so much more. But rather than me share with you all of her background and history, backstory, front story, we're going to bring her up and ask her to do that for you. And while we're bringing her up, let me say to you that I love her title, The Power of a graceful leader. We're going to talk about leadership. So Alexi, I call her Alexi is on her way up. Hello, 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 and welcome. Hi. Alexi, how are Hi. you? Hello. I'm fabulous, thank you. I'm, oh, I love that I'm fabulous. I knew that you would be. It's great to see you here, and I'm delighted that you were willing and able to join us tonight. Now, I gave a brief, brief bio, but I want you to tell us a little bit more about you how you got to where you are now, what you're doing, and how you're doing it, and then we'll take it from there. So the show, solo, you're on your own. <laughs> awesome, thank you. So um, I would say first and foremost, I am a person that's passionate about creating safe places for souls to show up. And I happen to do that a lot in corporate America, which I think is a good place to do that work. And I, I focus on the C-suite and the next rung down senior VPs and VPs specifically uh, because their leverage points and the um, impact to the many lives that report up through them and around them is pretty significant. Uh, so the leverage point is good. If you can help a leader be a better leader, you have a better organization and one that people that are thriving in and understand their purpose in. And I think the world's just a better as a result of that. Um, I do this through uh, my executive coaching practice for sure, but I will also tell you I'm a pretty high intuitive and I bring that work into what I'm doing. And through that work, I am um, really reaching out. I'm coming to my 51st birthday this Sunday coming. Yay! And yeah, and so in my late 40s, I just said, you know, it's time for me to do what it is I'm here to do and hi stop hiding behind what I think I'm supposed to do. And so I've been slowly dropping those masks. And part of that is being willing and able to get up into this video with you because I'm a pretty high introvert. So I, I'm, I'm nervous and I'm easy to be in front of groups of people. So keynote speaking and video interviews are a little overwhelming, but um, always a pleasure. I love the way you express that because, well, you, you had so many things that are going there. There's a lot twirling through my mind. But there's so many people who do this medium and they are introverted. And yet when they get here on the screen, they become a total different entity. You express it in a different way. You also mentioned something, Lexi, that I want to speak to. You said you got into your intuitive way of being yeah. and thinking and knowing. Share with us a little bit more about mm -hmm. that. Yeah, so um, I would say for me, a lot of my 30s and 40s were acquiring knowledge and certifications and working on the intellectual part of my being. And um, in my mid 40s, I picked up the spiritual part of my being and started to explore what that was and what that wasn't for me and how I wanted to experience and explore that part of my soul. And um, the next part I'm picking up, which I'm learning, you know, because it has been a while, kind of the mind and body connect, the soul, mind and body connection and bringing all three together in my 50s is the next task. And that one is proving to be rather interesting. <laughs> I think that's where a lot of people are coming yeah. to that kind of mindset today because we realize that the spirit, the body, the mind, the soul, they have to blend and combine. Mm -hmm. And so you have to be aware of that intuitive soulful knowing because it does know. It has the answers. Mm -hmm. I love the way you bring that into what you're doing. How does that come across when you're working with people maybe who are not as intuitive and knowing as you are about the gifts that they have. Yeah, so I think mostly um, my passion for creating the safe place is it leads the way. 
And I do that through um, helping a person develop a real robust gratitude press. Um, and it, you know, it starts pretty elementary with, hey, let's talk about some things you're grateful for, um, and then moves into how that impacts them as a leader and how it impacts all the people around them in a pretty significant way. Once people start to get into their gratitude practice, a really um, interesting thing I've noticed has evolved over the past decade is that gratitude opens up access to a lot of other places about who they are and what they want to be. And they start to be able to explore places that they just didn't take time or didn't have access to before. I get that. Yeah. I get that. Especially today, Lexi, because I might be expanding beyond the reality of what is, but there are too many people today who are at different age ranges, really, but who want to be mm-hmm. overnight success and they don't mm-hmm. really understand enough about themselves before they get on that road to what they feel or want to be success so that they have mm-hmm. to go more inside. That's why personal growth and personal development is so big now. But let's get back mm-hmm. to gratitude as a foundation for leadership. Speak to us a wee bit more about that because my feeling and knowing is I'm right with you on that mindset. Gratitude as a foundation for leadership is everything. You cannot lead without being grateful for what you have. Speak to us about that. Yeah, so I think most leaders have an intuitive knowing of of some form of gratefulness about how they got where they are. Maybe they had a mentor or some of the experiences that they're having, or let's just say their paycheck because it gets bigger as you go up the food chain. So there, set, there tends to be some form of a gratitude in place. Where this practice actually digs into is it goes beyond the obvious things. And it starts to dig into, and over um, a few months, you start to find out what your value system is. And when you look at your value system, then you can start to do great congruency around what you do, meaning your behavior, and who, what your soul wants you to show up as in the world. And when you start to create that congruency, this beautiful thing called gracefulness starts to fight behind just a byproduct of that work. Yes, yes. I yeah. get that. That that was very clear and precise. One of the things that happens, and I love how you have, by the way, I know that one of the things you want to share is that you've put together this gratitude journal. And yes. there's the first and second, is that it's coming out in July, is that correct? The second one, yes. Well, well, let me piggyback a little bit here and share this with you because spelling, English, and math, and I can also add in technology, they're not my favorites. But when I posted, my friend said that you spelled a tribal wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, I did not. That's no, I did not. Lexi spells it, and she has her reasoning for that. So that was that brought a chuckle to me, and I'm sure I can see it did for you as well. Tell us a little yes. bit about how you came to that spelling. I love that. <laughs> yeah, so I, I definitely believe in community. And so that's the tribal in the essence if you'd use the I. Um, and what I've also learned, just like a gym routine, a writing routine, your gratitude practice, there's a whole bunch of stops and starts, stops and starts, right? The whole adage of, you know, fall down seven, but make it up on time. And that that's no different on pretty much anything that you want to master. And so in the gratitude practice, we want community and we fully understand and expect that you're going to start and stop, start and stop until it just becomes a part of what you choose to do with your life. And so the trying piece is what the is the predicator for success. You have to try and fail, try and fail. And then one day, all of a sudden, this beautiful thing called success shows up and you wonder how you got there. Yes. And it's through that trial and try to say, I, I really get that and I'm chuckling because uh, one day last uh, last week or the week before I had a guest on here, uh, Dr. Carl, uh, Carol Atkinson, and she mentioned what you said, different terminology, different outlook, but it was the same thing. And she mm-hmm. said that whatever you want to become proficient at and excellent in, you have to do it, a, I'm just exaggerating, a zillion times. And mm-hmm. even after that zillionth time is up, you then have to always be in the process of elevating and upgrading. So the way that you express that, it just ties in. It's just another verbiage, another way of saying that. Yes. Tell us a little bit about your gratitude journals that will be coming out in July. 
Yeah. So the intention, a little backtrack here is that I have had the gratitude practice as part of my executive coaching practice for a while. And I would hand people this beautiful leather journal and it was blank. It was empty. And uh -huh. they would stare at it and go, now what? And so that's why I developed the first journal was to help people find a rhythm and with enough structure, but not too much structure to dive into that practice. Um, so that's the first, say, six months of your practice is just finding your rhythm, um, learning to express gratitude internally and out externally. The next journal that's coming out in July will be ready for those that started with me right away. And it starts to take it, it has the same gratitude methodology, but instead of gratitude and actions in book in the first journal, it, you start to take deep dives into yourself. So you're starting to pull the patterns of your gratitude. You're looking at how what how others see you, how you see yourself, checking your filters. And if you move through that journal with some kind of purpose, on the other side, you'll come out with a personal mission statement that is very soul purposed. So it, it'll it'll take your gratitude practice and your soul's desire and create behaviors that align to it. So you'll have a mission statement much like your version of what I have. I'm liking that. Yeah. I'm liking that, but I'm yes. some clarity here. Sure. Um, will it be three different gratitude uh, gratitude books, or is it one booklet? It's two different books. Um, oh. The first one's out, now, and the second one, where you you um, go through the process of creating your own mission statement and go through the self awareness, is journal two. Because one of the things that you sent me, and I love this, it said manifesting and entrepreneurship. Because there's so many, mm -hmm. especially well, men and women, but especially women who are going back mm -hmm. into the workflow, wanting to be their own agents. And then the yes. third uh, level that you had here was gratitude and grace and love mm -hmm. in the work we do. Mm -hmm. That's so important mm -hmm. because the almighty dollar, I volunteer with these young juvenile trouble and distress girls, and they mm -hmm. all want to be rich overnight. And they're clueless because their foundation is warped and wobbly. Yeah. And they're not alone. There are a lot of other people who feel the same way. So when you sure. talk about gratitude and grace and love in the work that you do, that's what we all have to do. You have to find what lights you up. Yeah. 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 That's, that's, I mean, hopefully we're all figuring that out sooner than later. But whenever you do, you do. And then you offer it to the world and the vibration of our world raises as a result. So we all rise with the tide. Ah, yeah. I love I love that. Now, when you are doing your executive coaching, how do you mm -hmm. best convey that? And I know every individual is an individual and unique, mm -hmm. but what are some mm -hmm. of the ways that you connect with that person that allows them to be able to get to the core of what they need to know to get to their gratitude and their soulfulness yeah. the that they love? Yeah, that's a really good question. Thank you for asking that question. So it's taken me years to be brave enough to say no to people or situations that probably aren't aligned. And that, you know, that's a scary thing to say no um, and do it and to be able to do it from a place of love and kindness for them, not just for yourself. Yes. Uh, so that's one part really part of my practice is being able to meet someone where they are and understand that I'm I am probably not the person they need in this moment in their journey and be able to have that conversation completely. Uh, the next part is, um, I guess it goes back to my intuitive sense. The more spiritual and grounded and meditated that I become, the more the things that are for me and, and I am for them swim, come into the swim lane. I only take um, 10 to 14 executive clients a year. So it's not a lot of people that I'm working with. It's a pretty refined process and with pretty high expectations for outcome. Um, so that also the funnel's not huge. Yeah. I love that. I love that. You have defined yeah. this over the years to a science for yourself, yes. which is what we all have to do. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, Lexi, we might have answered this question. What, but what do you think is a secret to success that everyone needs to know now? I think we might approach that, but I'd like to hear what your thoughts <laughs> are. <about. laughs> well, you know, I, it's funny. I was writing a, 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 I was editing and rewriting a piece for, um, the second gratitude journal, because it's filled with kind of short stories from me along the way to keep you moving. And this one was was one we hear a lot that I was really reflecting on. And it's about just loving self and being able to put self first. So, you know, the canned answer is gratitude in most anything. But the truth of the matter is 
when you can find that for you, whether it's your intellect, your body, your relationship capacity, your giving nature, whatever it is about you that's the gift to the world, and you can honor that and you can share that from a space of love, that, that's that's probably the success story. Where you, the money comes, you don't have to work so hard, and you you most often have the resources you need right when you need them. I like that. You know, I know that you're not a psychologist. I get that. <laughs> Yet, you did mention that intuitive knowing. Uh -huh. I'm not sure what it is, but a lot of us have that. I have it. Uh -huh. Why does it take us so long, do you think, to be <sighs> accepting of that awareness that we have? I think for women in our age group or people that are in their 50s, you know, 40s, 50s and 60s, yes. part of it was just the, the way we grew up, right? The things that we were we were taught, the uh, maybe the belief, religious beliefs we had, the construct lived with. And those are fading away pretty quickly. And there's pluses and minuses to that. So it's not all good and it's not all bad. But as you as you start to, to shed some of those masks that our society is rapidly shedding and testing to shed the possibilities to emerge into that knowing at a more rapid pace are available so i'll tell you that just when i'm coaching i do some work with the millennials in the workforce and so i am constantly amazed because i hear entitlement oh, is that true sometimes yes but there's a lot of 50 year olds that are pretty dang entitled yes so <laughs> so when i'm working with Mil i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry hallelujah is what i wanted to say because it's, yeah, because you know, I was on that path for a while myself, saying that it's all the younger people younger. And then yeah. I started to really look around. And there are a lot of people my age, 10, 20 years old, younger or older, who are just as bad with this entitlement. Yes. What is that about? Yes. yes. Well, I'll tell you, if you knock entitlement out of your life, you pick up a gratitude practice. It is the it is the it actually is the very thing and there's science behind it um, that will take an entitlement and put it where it needs to be because you cannot hold the gratefulness for something and be entitled to it at the same exact time. Indeed. Ownership and grace don't exist in the same moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. So with the millennials, to go back to your earlier question. They, they have half life learning, you know, so what took me 10 years takes them five years. And that's just the way that it is. And they're not at fault for it. We're not at fault for it. We just need to learn to figure out how to make it work together. Um, and I raised two millennials. And I couldn't be more proud of, of who they are, who they're becoming in the world. Um, in fact, my daughter just started a millennial self-aware podcast. Um, so I'm pumped for her to be able to doing that. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. Let, let me ask you, do you think that technology might have a lot to do with why the millennials have that? outlook or and even other people do you think that technology maybe because everybody can google everything now and to the dictionary and get any and everything and they think they have consumed it and it's not so i don't know how that fits in what say yeah. you well i i would say absolutely in fact we were talking about it the other day as a family and and we all kind of had the aha um when we thought about the things that each generation grew up with, that it was no wonder that based upon the time they came into the planet in the early 90s, they haven't known a world without technology that's moving and changing and every two or three years known and you have an upgrade or a new computer or a whole new technology and you and I didn't grow up in that space. No. I mean, I remember when the fax machine came out, it's a miracle how paper flies through the air. So, <laughs> you know, I, it's a whole different world. So I have to say it impacts them both in their capacity to learn, which we're seeing is highly accelerated and in their may, perhaps impatience for the information and the learning experience to manifest itself completely. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Now, we know that you have the gratitude journal coming out in July. Mm -hmm. What's next mm -hmm. on your agenda? What are you planning? Yeah. yeah, so I'm really excited. This this idea has been manifesting for about 11 years, so it's a big deal for me. Ooh. I'm doing a women's retreat in Vermont, what? the power of a graceful leader. Yeah. And we're about a third way sold out, so that's really exciting because you always wonder if you're going to have a retreat and anybody comes. So that's cool. Um, so, so it looks, that's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm writing a, a tra more traditional book with the same title, titled The Power of a Graceful Leader. That won't be as gender specific. That's yeah. fantastic. This uh, retreat that you're having in Vermont, does mm -hmm. it all evolve around gratitude 
will there be other people there sharing the stage with you or the center? Or um, yes, I do. I do have um, another woman coming in, a very powerful woman um, coming in to do one of the three days. Um, I think part of key leadership is knowing when to lead and when to follow. And Jill, her name is Jillian. So I want to demonstrate that they're, they're most of the people are coming because they're in my swim lane somehow. Um, and I want them to watch me step down and let another woman lead and be in a space of learning. I, if we could learn that as women back and forth, learn the grace of that and not be threatened by that and be in love and celebration in that moment, oh God, we could conquer the world. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Uh, oh, I'm yeah. all the way. Let me say hello to friends that I see here. Hello, one and all. April Roga, who's always chiming in and championing me and everyone that she is involved with on. I'm glad to see you here, April. I hope you have some questions. If not, just stay tuned. Let me just say what you shared with us a moment ago is, is very powerful about leadership in that you are ready to step down and let somebody else take over the reins, right? Did I hear you say that more or less? One yes. of the great characteristics or traits of a good leader is that you can follow as well as you can lead and you know when to step back and let somebody take the reins. You don't need uh -huh. the tiara and the crown all the time. Uh -uh. That and honestly, I mean, and honestly, if as you become a more senior leader, if you're not stepping down, you're not doing your job. I mean, one of a leader's most, as we get into senior leadership, their highest contribution is to develop leaders behind them and around them. Um, and when you do that, you don't need the stage anymore. Yes. That's why the cycle of life is that once you have mastered to an extent, whatever your gift or your skill is, mm -hmm. you'll always be in the process of doing that. But your mm -hmm. responsibility is to share it yeah. with all of those who want to embrace it and maybe some that don't. So that yeah. in itself is a good sign of leadership. I don't know where the time goes, but it always seems to go too quickly. And you are a pro and a champ and you are in my little black book forever. Because by the way, the audience, they would know that because you're in another time zone and I didn't have Eastern Standard Time on my checklist to you, I had to call you and then you arrived and you jumped into the seat. Boom, one, two, three. I will always admire and love you for that. Let me just say, is there anything that I didn't ask you that you want to talk about, or do you have a question for me or the audience before we say goodbye for now or so long for now? Yeah, so first always I wanna express my deepest heartfelt gratitude for sharing your space and your airwaves and your network with me. It's a gift that doesn't go unnoticed. So thank you. Yeah. Uh, and I guess the thing would be fun for everybody to do maybe tonight, just so it's top of mind. If you don't have a gratitude practice, just, just sit and meditate or pick up a pen and paper um, you don't need a fancy journal. If you have one, great. And just write until you get tired the things you are grateful for today. If it's one, it's one. If it's 29, it's 29. But just keep going until you get exhausted of it. I don't think uh, anyone could deny that that will be a transformational kind of experience to do because most of us don't do these things as often as we should. So that's a great tip. Lexi, thank yeah. you so much. All of this information that you shared will be put onto YouTube and onto Joy TV, and then you'll be able to get a copy for you and all of your websites and your social media sites will be listed so that okay. people can connect with you. And it was my honor to share space and time with you. I love meeting with women who are all about being change agents, trailblazers, women who are purpose-driven, cosmic healers, and you're like a combination of all of those. So thank you thank for being you. here. I applaud you. you again and again. I'm going to put you into the lobby for now, but then uh, stay okay. because I want to connect with you one more time. And thank you. I went too quick with that, but that's okay. She understands. And by the way, all of you that I see here, thank you for coming. I'm always grateful and thankful that you're here and that you show because without you, there is no show, even though we realize that the replays are very important. This show is really all about leading ladies, leading legacies, living legacies. As I said, women who are purpose-driven, cosmic healers, women who are heart-centered leaders, which is what Lexi spoke to tonight and how gratitude plays into that. And women who are agents of change and trailblazers, we are looking for women who are in that direction, settling, ordinary, 
No. Extraordinary? Yes. So I'm always grateful when I look down and see that there are those of you who are faithful and loyal who are always here. And then when I go back to see the replay, you know that you can connect with us on the website and also you get your free book if you're interested in that. And what I'm going to do is make sure that everything that you need is there that you can connect with Lexi again because her gratitude journal, which comes out in July, you should be the first in line to get it. I already know that it's going to be on one of the bestseller lists. So thank you again for being here. Always a pleasure. Until the next time, you be and stay well and enjoy your weekend. All the best. Bye-bye for now. Cheers.